Thank you. We have reached the uh, point on the clock where we uh, end the debate momentarily and we uh, go to member statements. I recognize the member for Beaches, East York. Thank you, Speaker. For months now, the Premier has been exhorting Ontarians to stay home as the answer to rising COVID numbers. But our frontline workers can't stay home. Our essential workers can't stay home. The folks who stock grocery shelves or work at the drugstore or convenience store or deliver things that we now all order online, they can't stay home. And many of them know that they will lose their homes if their income drops, so they have no choice but to go to work sick, even if those are COVID symptoms they have, even if they have tested positive. People can't stay home if they're going to lose their housing as a result, and now the Premier is refusing to ban evictions. New COVID variants are frightening, and it will be months before most Ontarians get their shots. But people can't stay home if it means they can't pay their bills. We need paid sick days so that our frontline heroes, the same ones we've banged on pans for and celebrate, can keep a roof over their heads and food on the table. People are sick and tired of lockdowns and angry with the Ford government that blames individuals for flouting rules but won't put in place the supports that people need to keep everyone safe. If our schools and small businesses are going to open and stay open, we need people who are sick to be able to stay home without losing theirs. Paid sick days now. Thank you. Thank you. The next member's statement, the member for Sarnia Lambton. Thank you, uh, Speaker. It's a privilege to rise today and announce another critical health care investment in Lambton County by the Government of Ontario. Today, Mr. Speaker, our government is investing over $2.8 million to expand the Community Paramedicine for Long-Term Care program in Lambton County. This initiative builds on Lambton County's successful paramedicine program that also received full annualized provincial funding last summer. The new Community Paramedicine for Long-Term Care program will help seniors on long-term care wait lists stay safe in their own homes by providing them with direct access to non-emergency support 24-hour days, seven days a week by paramedicine practitioners like the Lambton County EMS. This program is another way our government is collaborating with our health care system partners to provide innovative services in support of our goal to end hallway health care in Ontario and to build a 21st century long-term care system while also responding to the impact of COVID-19, which is had on this sector. The program works alongside home care, primary care, community care, and leverages the skills of community paramedicine practitioners to provide non-emergency support, such as home visits and remote monitoring. The program is fully funded, Mr. Speaker, by the provincial government, operated in partnership with our municipal partners. Mr. Speaker, this is another terrific example of how the government of Ontario is investing in things that matter most to the people of Ontario and in my riding of Sarnia Lambton. Thank you. I recognize the member for Niagara Centre. Thank you, Speaker. People across this province and in my riding of Niagara Centre continue to do their part in the fight against COVID-19. Ontario is seeing a rapid increase of the COVID-19 variants of concern. Public health measures are lifting, and people across this province still do not have access to paid sick days. The federal sick leave program does not replace full income and is not adequate for people to stay home. Academic studies have found that workers who lack paid sick leave are 1.5 times more likely to go to work contagious. Every local public health agency has urged this government to implement paid sick days. Ontario mayors and their councils, the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario, the Ontario Medical Association are all telling the Ford government that there is an urgent need to guarantee paid sick days for the duration of the pandemic. Although it is clearly a provincial responsibility, this Premier continues to place the burden on the people of this province instead of showing real leadership and ensuring that people can stay home when they're sick. The people who stock our groceries, ensure our food supply in our warehouses, who care for our seniors in long-term care need paid sick days to stay home. They take care of us and are counting on us to take care of them. Today, I'm urging the government to listen to the science, respect the experts, and pass Bill 239. I recognize the member for Haldeman Northfold. Thank you, Speaker. <clears throat> this month marks the unfortunate uh, 15th anniversary 
to the occupation of Caledonia's Douglas Creek Estate subdivision, February 28, 2006 to be exact, marking 15 years of road blockades, detours, confrontation, and intimidation. More recently, February 24th last year, Provincial Highway 6 was blockaded at Caledonia in support of the uh, Wet'suwet'en and Coastal Gas Link uh, Pipeline protest, part of the Shutdown Canada movement. As with railroads across Canada, last February also saw the shutdown of the CN line, runs from Caledonia down to the Nanticoke Industrial Park, and this followed police action to clear the Deserano Railway blockade following a statement by Prime Minister uh, Trudeau that blockades, and I quote, must come down and that court injunctions must be obeyed and the law must be upheld. Premier Ford echoed these sentiments. Enough is enough. The illegal blockades must come down. The federal government must coordinate action to take down these illegal blockades across the country. July 19th last year, another subdivision was occupied. Mackenzie Meadow. In August, destruction ensued. By October, Highway 6, Caledonia Bypass, the CN Line, Mackenzie Road, and Argyle Street were all blockaded. Highway 6 reopened February 10th. Argyle repairs finished up today. Mackenzie Road will be repaired in two days, and they are inspecting the CN rail. I'm pleased to report as of today. Thank you, Speaker. Recognize the member for Ottawa Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, Speaker, on February 12, 2021, a note came out from the Government of Ontario that was called Guidance for Facilities for Sports and Recreational Faci uh, Fitness Activities During COVID-19 Province-Wide Shutdown for Persons with Disabilities. I want to say to you, Speaker, and I want to say to the people at home who will be watching this clip, this advisory didn't happen by accident. It happened because two fantastic people from Ottawa, Melanie Coughlin and Mary Jane Clinkard, people with disabilities who need aqua therapy to live decent, meaning and fulfilling lives took action. I want to note for everyone watching this clip speaker that when we ask people in Ontario to stay safe and stay home and we push the province into a lockdown for the right reasons, we can't think that one size fits all. We have to remember that people with disabilities need access to crucial therapies to live. Because what is the alternative? The alternative is people have breathing problems, respiratory problems, health problems, and they end up in the very hospitals we are trying to keep open. So I want to thank Melanie Coughlin. I want to thank Mary Jane Clinkard. I want to thank Michael Thomas, the Chief of Staff in Minister Cho's office, for taking a particular interest in pushing this in the government. I want to thank CBC Ottawa Morning. I want to thank Joanne Lauches from the Ottawa Citizen, who raised this story. And folks watching at home, never forget that organizing in your community and pushing a government to, the right, to do the right thing can make a difference. We got this win. We need more wins. Thank you, Mel. Thank you, Mary Jane. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. The next statement, the member for Don Valley East. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It's, uh, it's great to be in the House today representing the wonderful people of Don Valley East. Mr. Speaker, throughout this pandemic, I've seen some incredible uh, constituents step up and really make a difference in the community. And I want to talk uh, particularly about a young woman named Abigail Liu who did just that. She's always been passionate. She's always looked for ways to help her community. And through her leadership, she set up a not-for-profit organization that was student-run in the community to address accessibility needs. And she partnered with many different organizations over the holidays, like Inner City Outreach, the Pregnancy Care Centre, and the Matthew House in Toronto to collect baskets uh, to provide them with, to people uh, in need. Uh, Mr. Speaker, these were new parents expecting mothers and new Canadians. Um, I'm just so happy that we have uh, someone like Abigail in our community making such a, a difference, especially as a young uh, Ontarian, a young Canadian, stepping up and really looking for ways to improve our community and take on challenges during this challenging time. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Brantford Brant. Thank you, Speaker. I am happy to rise in the House today and to talk a little bit about the Boys and Girls Club of Brantford and Brant. More than 50 years ago, visionary members of the Rotary Club in Brantford recognized the need for quality recreational opportunities for youth. Today, the Boys and Girls Club serves thousands of children across Brantford and Branton, operates in multiple locations to serve our diverse communities. 
The Boys and Girls Club of Brantford has grown into one of Brantford's most effective youth service organizations and is looking forward to enhancing their services to even better serve our community. The Boys and Girls Club of Brantford is all about levelling the playing field and providing opportunities for youth to reach their full potential by supporting their healthy physical, educational and social development. Being a leader, provide, leading provider of after-school and critical hours learning programs, the Boys and Girls Club has been recognized for significantly contributing to healthy lifestyle and development of youth when they need encouragement the most. With families and other partners in the community, the Boys and Girls Club will help youth to be healthy, confident, responsible, and successful in life. Once again, I am happy to celebrate this outstanding organization in my home riding of Brantford Brant. And don't be surprised if you hear lots of good news coming in the days and weeks to come. Thank you, Speaker. Member statements. The member for Toronto Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Nestled in the Corktown neighbourhood in my riding in Toronto Centre, you will find the Dominion Wheel and Foundry buildings. Built between 1917 and 1928, the four buildings were heritage designated by the City of Toronto in 2008. But in early January, local residents called my office in a panic as they saw demolition equipment assembling on the site. After speaking to construction workers, it was revealed that the provincially owned buildings were in fact being demolished. This was the first that my office, the city councillor's office, or the local community had even heard that our heritage buildings were being put at risk. In the middle of a pandemic, this government took a wrecking ball to my community. But in Toronto Centre, we are no stranger to a good fight. A new group called Friends of the Foundry formed to, de to defend our local heritage. The St. Lawrence Neighbourhood Association and the city mounted a legal challenge. And at a hearing for an injunction, the justice presiding over the case agreed that the Premier and the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing had broken Ontario's heritage laws. My community has a vision for that site, to see it repurposed as affordable housing and desperately needed community use space, like an arts complex as proposed by the IRCPA. But this vision is not mutually exclusive to maintaining heritage. We can have and deserve to have both community-oriented development and heritage preservation. So to the Premier and to the Minister, respectfully get out of Corktown and hands off our foundry buildings. Thank you. The member for Willowdale. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and good morning. And I'm excited to share some long overdue ne uh, news from my riding. On December 16th, Speaker, the Willowdale Business Improvement Area, or BIA, was officially approved by Toronto City Council. This is comprised of local Main Street businesses, uh, and I'm proud to say the BIA will work to carry out improvements, uh, important improvements like promoting economic development, uh, fi financing revitalization pro projects, improving streetscapes, restoring building facades, organizing events like the Taste of the Danforth, perhaps the Taste of Willowdale, uh, and much, much more. When COVID-19 hit our province, Speaker, there became an immediate need to accelerate plans to establish a BIA in Willowdale to give critical assistance to local businesses, and on January 18th, I was proud to attend their inaugural annual general meeting. Willowdale is one of the most culturally diverse neighbourhoods in Canada and one of the highest population densities in the country. It's also home to uh, more than 1,800 businesses, many of which are restaurants who've been hit very hard by this pandemic. Uh, when COVID-19 is behind us, I invite everyone to take a stroll along Young Street north of the 401 and visit one of the many shops and restaurants that make our community special. Try some bibimbap, pho, pork bone soup, halo halo, sabsi polo mahi, or a juicy hamburger. Congratulations to the Willowdale BIA on their founding, and I look forward to working closely with them to promote and improve the Willowdale business community. The next statement, the member for Whitby. Thank you, uh, Speaker. I want to highlight this morning the work of the Charles H. Best Diabetes Centre in Whitby. For Durham residents coping with type 1 diabetes, these current conditions make dealing with these potentially fatal disease that much more difficult. And Speaker, this is where the Charles H. Best Diabetes Centre steps in to help. The nurses, dietitians, and social workers work with thousands of patients, helping hospitals meet the growing needs in Durham Region. Speaker, the Best Centre is saving lives, and now during the pandemic, their programs and services are needed more than ever. Due to the rapid residential growth in Durham Region, 
The Best Centre will need to double its size by 2026, with an estimated future growth of 93 per cent over 10 years. Speaker, to uh, address this growing demand, the Best Centre is undertaking a $5 million fundraising campaign to add to its current facilities. And that campaign will be led by Dr. Gary Polanski, one of the leaders of our community, to ensure that the one-of-the-kind centre will continue to provide the direct care, education and support to the growing number of patients and families living in the great region of Durham Region. Thank you. That concludes our member statements for this morning. Point of order. Member for Brampton East. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to call for the unanimous consent for a moment of silence to remember the more than 200 farmers in India who have died peacefully protesting for their livelihood. Yes. Member for Brampton East is seeking unanimous consent of the House for a moment of silence to remember the more than 200 farmers who have died in India while peacefully protesting for their livelihood. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. I'll ask all members to rise. Thank you very much. A point of order, the member for Toronto Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, I'm seeking unanimous consent to move a motion uh, regarding the immediate passage of Bill 244, the No COVID-19 Evictions uh, Act 2021, to help keep people from being evicted during COVID-19. The member for Toronto Centre is seeking unanimous consent to move a motion regarding the immediate passage of Bill 244, the No COVID-19 Evictions Act 2021, to help people help keep people from being evicted during COVID-19. Agreed? No. Heard and all. Southwestern, I believe, may have a point of order. Speaker, I seek an unanimous consent to immediately pass private member's motion 135, calling on the Ford government to implement a COVID-19 equity strategy for racialized communities disproportionately affected by the uh, pandemic. Member seeking unanimous consent to immediately pass private member's motion num number 135, calling on the Ford government to implement a COVID-19 equity strategy for racialized communities disproportionately affected by the pandemic. Agreed? Agreed. No. I heard a no. Good order. I seek unanimous consent to immediately pass private member's motion 137, calling on the Ford government to implement a back-to-school plan with improved funding for classroom caps, better ventilation, and a safety committee made up of experts, parents, students, education worker unions, and boards. Member for Davenport is seeking unanimous consent of the House to immediately pass private member's motion 137, calling on the Ford government to implement a back-to-school plan with improved funding for classroom caps, better ventilation, and a safety committee made up of experts, parents, students, education workers' unions, and boards. Agreed? Agreed. I heard a no. Agreed. 